you enjoy that out there? Yeah, darling, I think I did. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 movies that bombed so hard they ruined actors' careers. Come on, do something crazy. Yeah, do something crazy. For this list, we'll be looking at the biggest critical and or commercial film failures that wrecked a star's reputation in Hollywood. We'll include movies that starred actors that later bounced back. Did we forget a poorly received movie that derailed a career? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Dennis Rodman. Simon says, Hey baby. Long time no see. Give me the briefcase and we keep it that way. Dennis Rodman's NBA talent was undeniable, but his work in film was relatively short-lived. After making Double Team with Jean-Claude Van Damme, Rodman tried leading the action movie Simon Says. In this film, the audience is supposed to buy that the athlete is an Interpol agent, but neither Rodman's job title or his acting is remotely believable. Tell me all about the guy. What, what guy? The guy you flew here to meet. It's just a guy, you know, just a five minutes and we're out of here kind of guy, you know? I don't see what you're getting all testy about. <laughs> the actor's low energy performance doesn't really vibe with the high octane action sequences. Additionally, he has zero chemistry with cast members like Dane Cook. When Rodman's lack of skills were combined with a baffling plot, the movie became an airball at the box office. Although he appeared in a couple of films later on, Rodman's career as a leading man was over after this bomb. Sorry. Yeah. You want the good news or the bad news? Give me the bad news. Number 19, Gene Kelly, Xanadu. Hey, mister, what are you doing up there? Hope you don't mind a little noontime music, kid. After spending decades becoming known as one of the most talented Hollywood triple threats, Gene Kelly skated into a role in Xanadu. The movie tried to cram disco themes, Greek mythology, and a nightclub into one flashy package. It's not surprising to see why this plot didn't exactly resonate with most audiences. Admittedly, Kelly's joyful presence is a welcome addition to the movie. But he couldn't save the overall film. Whether it was the bold aesthetics or the otherworldly story, the musical failed to garner much love. The awfully reviewed title even helped inspire the infamous Razzie Awards that shamed bad movies. Unfortunately, the legendary star wasn't able to step out of the shadow of this misfire musical before he retired from Hollywood. Man, this whole thing is screwing me up. What whole thing? Oh, no. Come on, have a cup of coffee. Number 18, Kelly Clarkson and Justin Guarini from Justin to Kelly. I'm Justin. Oh. Thanks. So Justin, do you spend a lot of time in the girls' room? You know, I just needed to make a quick escape. After Kelly Clarkson and Justin Guarini became the first winner and runner-up respectively of American Idol, executives wanted to see if the singers could be movie stars too. Although the two were more than ready to do concerts, they didn't quite have the acting shops for movies yet. It didn't help that they were stuck in an extremely cliched story about a will-they-won't-they they romance that starts during spring break. Been watching you a while and I really like your smile. I can see you got a lie. In the end, the movie lost big at the box office. The company didn't even bother releasing a studio album of the soundtrack. Both members of the duo thankfully pivoted to successful careers afterwards. Although they each get the occasional acting role, we don't expect a Justin to Kelly sequel anytime soon. What can I do to make it up to you? You can shave all the hair on your head, except for here and here. All right. Number 17, Julia Sweeney. It's Pat. That's right, I say that's life. Move on, accept. That's federal offense, Pat. During the early 1990s, Julia Sweeney was a prominent cast member on Saturday Night Live. One of her most notable roles saw her play the androgynous character, Pat. For some reason, execs thought the character needed their own feature-length film. The bulk of the plot revolves around people trying to figure out Pat's gender identity. I know everything about you, Pat. Everything except the one thing I must know. What else is there to know? Take off your clothes. If that doesn't sound like a comedy to you, then you should know that critics and audiences agreed. It grossed less than $100,000 on an $8 million budget. While Sweeney was able to pick up small roles in film and TV after the flop, it took nearly a decade for her to become a series regular on a show again. We admire your persistence and your creativity, but we meant it when we said we only needed you for one show. That's all right. Number 16, Lori Petty, Tank Girl. Now, everybody drop your guns. 
or I scrape off all her makeup. Lori Petty might look familiar to fans of the sports classic A League of Their Own. After starring as supporting character Kit Keller, she got to play the lead in Tank Girl. Unfortunately for the actress, this comic book adaptation didn't end up being the ideal star vehicle. This is definitely a case where Petty gave a solid and fun performance. However, the terrible plot and baffling production decisions made Tank Girl a tonally strange sci-fi epic. You yes, asked your question, answer it! Hey, I have two words for you. Brush your teeth! The bizarre narrative kept viewers away and ensured the movie couldn't earn back its budget. This setback discouraged Hollywood from casting Petty in big-ticket films. Fortunately, she eventually found success on TV on shows like Orange is the New Black. Number 15, Shaquille O'Neal, Steel. Johnny, are you... Just a little trashed. Shaquille O'Neal is one of the most charismatic celebrities around. However, his good nature doesn't often translate into excellent acting performances. In one of O'Neal's worst attempts, he starred as the superhero Steel. While the script's dialogue and characters admittedly didn't do him many favors, his performance seriously weighed the project down. Most of O'Neill's lines are delivered with the exact same tone and emotion. We can't turn our backs on this kind of potential firepower. Maybe you can't, but after what happened to Sparks, I can. Although the shots he takes at himself can be funny, the flashes of humor aren't enough to keep Steel going. The poor box office returns and bad reviews deflated O'Neill's chances as a leading man. Since then, he's often only brought off the acting bench to make cameos. Damn it. Number 14, Chris Klein, Rollerball. Jonathan, we heard you in the rock climbing accident, are you alright? <laughs> yeah, you know me, I'm hard to hurt. In the 1990s, Chris Klein achieved a mainstream acting success in successful comedies such as American Pie. His good-natured demeanor shaped his early filmography, but he attempted to open up his career to different roles with a role in Rollerball. Serving as a remake of the 1970s sci-fi classic, the 2002 version attempts to update the tale of extreme sports with mixed results. It was dismissed for diluting the more intricate satire of the original and leaving stars like Klein with barely anything to work with. Ridley, I'll be fine, I promise. No! Get to the American consulate on the other side. They'll have me on a plane first thing in the morning. The film wasn't able to make half of its budget back either. While Klein's star faded a bit after wiping out with Rollerball, he was able to race back into consistent TV and movie roles a few years later. You gotta know there are a lot of people unhappy with your situation. Well, my personal situation is none of their business. Number 13, Gina Davis, Cutthroat Island. It's a map to Cutthroat Island, the buried treasure of a Spanish gold ship. More gold, jewels, and plunder than you've ever dreamed of. Winning an Academy Award and starring in commercial films in the 80s and early 90s, Gina Davis was a surefire choice to star in Cutthroat Island in 1995. The swashbuckling adventure story partnered Davis up with Matthew Modine in a big-budget production. Audiences in the middle of the decade were not compelled by the material, and it became a historic box office bomb. Got it by those who never grow old. And your grandfather was the only one that came back. Despite the talent and money on display, this pirate movie proved to be a substantial setback in the actor's career. The next few years saw less roles for her as an above-the-title star, positioning her as a supporting actor instead. Next to a few parts in television, she started working in the 2000s to promote female representation in media. Hey, it's all right. It's okay. I'm okay. You got it all, didn't you? Number 12, Lindsay Lohan, I Know Who Killed Me. I think I'm Aubrey's twin sister. Her identical twin sister. I mean, hospitals make mistakes. We could have been separated at birth. Lindsay Lohan got her start as a child actor with successful performances like The Parent Trap. After transitioning into successful roles in her teenage years with movies like Mean Girls, it looked like she was set to take off. But one of the movies that stalled her career trajectory was I Know Who Killed Me. Years after playing identical twins in a family film, Lohan was set to portray siblings in a much darker thriller mystery. But the indecipherable plot and her uneven performances earned the movie terrible reviews. I made up a social security number when I needed one, but I couldn't keep a job long enough for that to matter. Lohan struggled to reestablish her reputation as a great actress in comparatively smaller roles. Her lead role in 2022's Falling for Christmas was a sign to many that she might finally regain her former glory. And don't worry about me. I'll be in very good hands. I'll be with Dad. Number 11, Cuba Gooding Jr., Boat Trip. Hey! Hey! Stop acting like a jerk! 
We'll figure this out! Throughout the 1990s, Cuba Gooding Jr. established himself as a multi-talented artist, with Oscar-winning performances and blockbuster roles. But he veered into choppy acting waters in the early 2000s by starring in vehicles like Boat Trip. This vacation comedy had potential and a stacked cast. However, the plot is built upon lazy jokes, an extremely problematic romantic subplot, and a ton of cheap stereotypes about the LGBTQ community. Unbelievable. That was embarrassing! The failure of this movie was followed by a series of bad film choices throughout the decade. After making it through a rocky portion of his career, Gooding Jr. was set to make a comeback after his notable turn as O.J. Simpson. These gloves are too small. Too tight. It won't fit. But his legal troubles make a full return to form unlikely. Number 10. Dana Carvey, the Master of Disguise Nearly a decade after leaving SNL, Dana Carvey got a chance to be the star of his own feature. What is happening? Uh, I'm getting bigger. I, I, I got so fat. The film showed off his talent for impressions, but it received negative reactions for its childish jokes and a less than convincing storyline. Carvey's abilities were stretched out into a movie that sometimes ranks among the worst comedies of its kind. Am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? Is he okay? Even with its limited financial success, The Master of Disguise was the comedian's last role before a lengthy film hiatus. He instead shifted his attention to his family and stand-up in the meantime. Other than the occasional appearance on late-night television or podcasts, the performer rarely acts in movies outside of voice work. Suave, Terry Suave's the name, London, Scotland Yard, that sort of thing. What do you want? It's not what I want that matters, it's what the British government wants. Number 9. Madonna. Swept Away. The Italian film Swept Away by Lena Wertmuller received a 21st century update courtesy of director Guy Ritchie. The adventure is over. <laughs> the adventure is just starting for you, my friend. Just wait till my lawyer speaks to your captain. The movie focuses on the story of two complete opposites surviving on a deserted island together. Playing the part of a snobby rich woman, Madonna was heavily criticized for her appearance in the love story. I'll give you $100. 200. Given that the singer and Richie were married at the time, there was even more spotlight on the two artists during that period. Some people noted that the film was inferior to the original, along with the performer's character being a divisive anti-hero. But what difference does it make where we are? Please, I beg of you, let's stay. I love you. The remake ended up being one of her last live-action roles, turning her attention back to music and touring in the years since. Number 8. Tom Green. Freddy Got Fingered. It's hard to believe that a movie called Freddy Got Fingered was released to the general public. I'm not going to Hollywood just to work in a cheese sandwich factory. I'm going to Hollywood to shop my drawings. I'm going to be a famous animator like Charles Schultz. Directed by, written by, and starring Tom Green, the film was a provocative comedy with some truly controversial jokes. Green had momentary attention from this film and other projects, such as his MTV show, but the reaction to the former halted any major career progress. For your information, this is me being creative. Betty told me this is what I need to do in order to become an artist. Oh yeah, is it working? While much of his comedy from that period has developed a cult following, he's mainly steered towards his own stand-up and more talk shows in the intervening years. Green has yet to return to the level of stardom he achieved in the early 2000s. Just give me $100,000 in cash, put the rest of my checking savings account. <laughs> what do you want with 100 grand, Gord? <laughs> Number 7. Alicia Silverstone, Batman and Robin Batman and Robin wasn't kind to any of its main stars, including Alicia Silverstone. Bruce, it's me, Barbara. I found the Batcave. We gotta get those locks changed. She knows who we are. Guess we'll just have to kill her. Yep, we'll kill her later, we have work to do. She had built up a reputation for her charismatic turn in Clueless, and was touted to be another huge star. After the release of the most panned Batman film ever, Silverstone started to disappear from larger Hollywood productions. Her appearance as Batgirl didn't inspire confidence in filmmakers at the time, earning her a Razzie Award and a mixed reception for the role. Barbara, I hope you'll stay with us. Oh, but so we... Oh, I don't know, all this luxury really isn't my style, but um... Yeah, I'd love to. Films like Blast from the Past and Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed offered her supporting parts through the end of the 90s and the 2000s. Participating in theater, the actor also spent the next few decades exploring different artistic avenues. So that at Oxbridge? Uh, well, you know, just a few judo lessons, you know. Uh, London's kind of rough. I suppose you had a minor in motorbikes also, huh? Oh, 
can resist. Number six, Carrot Top, chairman of the board. Love him or not, Carrot Top is widely known as a premier prop comic. Check it out as usual. I got all kinds of stuff I want to show you guys. I got, check it out. This is a new baseball glove for the striking baseball players. We want more money. We want more money. His rise to fame in the 90s spawned several TV appearances and this film. Chairman of the Board captures the performer's wackiness in a movie that didn't go over well with audiences. With bizarre casting choices, including Raquel Welch, the strange plot about an inventor taking over a corporation failed to connect on a comedic level. $23 million? Oh, that's a lot of samples! Woohoo! Thank you, sir. I've always loved the law. The movie didn't even crack a million dollars at the box office, unable to transplant Carrot Top's success into the film world. Instead of taking a starring role in another project, he focused on his live comedy and developed a show in Las Vegas at the Luxor Hotel. Without further ado, ta-da! The device that's gonna rock the world! Number five, Warren Beatty, Town and Country. Come on, are you telling me that in the last 25 years you haven't even... No. What? You have a one time? No. You're kidding. Although Warren Beatty's status as an A-list star is indisputable, his stellar career isn't without a few duds. The rom-com Town and Country stands as his biggest flop yet. This film had an incredible cast that included the likes of Charlton Heston and Goldie Hawn. Unfortunately, not a single one of the acting heavyweights in the movie could make it compelling to watch. You're embarrassing. You're embarrassing my friends. You're embarrassing my friends. And you're embarrassing yourself. Neither the physical comedy or wordplay could inspire as much as a giggle either. Beatty was absent from movie theaters for a decade and a half following this release. After that long gap in filmography, he was able to return to the big screen with a passion project called Rules Don't Apply. Do you think I don't know what you're planning? What I'm planning? What you're planning. You think I'm nuts. Number four, Taylor Kitsch, John Carter. John Carter was set to be a huge Disney live action epic. Whatever it is you suppose I owe you, our country, or any other beloved cause I have already paid. Instead of breaking records in a good way, the movie was among the biggest failures of its kind. The film's star, Taylor Kitsch, could have likely gone on to greater success, but this disastrous release stalled his trajectory as a future box office star. I'm not for hire. I've got a cave of gold of my own, somewhere. He reappeared in films like Lone Survivor, but it seemed like the fallout from the sci-fi adventure had dashed any chances of him attaining leading man status. Any plans for a sequel were also ditched, despite original plans to the contrary. Kitsch has found more success in television since John Carter, whereas his future in cinema remains unclear. We ride for some danger! Number three, Jamie Kennedy, Son of the Mask. Okay, buddy. It's just you and me this morning. And we're gonna have fun and gonna play. Jamie Kennedy was never a massive star, but he received several chances to reach a bigger audience. If you were the only suspect in a senseless bloodbath, would you be standing in the horror section? Well, it was just a misunderstanding. After his role in Scream and his own prank show, this part in Son of the Mask was a big break for him as a potential comedy star. Instead of capturing the spirit of the original, the film was a jumbled mix of endless gags without the edge of Jim Carrey's presence. Audiences largely steered away from the spin-off and its lack of genuine star power. Kennedy took on a significant amount of criticism, and after the film, his opportunities in Hollywood seemed to largely fade away. He's managed to pave his own path in lesser-known movies, but this critical failure was a negative flashpoint for his career. Alvy, look at me. It's your dad. There's no more superpowers. Number two, Mike Myers, the love guru. Waking pudding, I can't take this. Not again, what, why, why? In the 90s, Mike Myers was synonymous with hilarious comedy in both television and film. Very shagadelic, baby, yeah! <laughs> the actor finished out his spy trilogy, Austin Powers, in the early 2000s, later focusing on an original idea called The Love Guru. The result was one of Myers' biggest critical and commercial misfires. Parodying Bollywood cinema, the movie doesn't have the same fresh energy as Myers' previous work, Ineffective and unflattering for the star, the project didn't impress audiences. The resulting effect dulled the actor's hold on Hollywood and compelled him to take a step back from leading roles. He's slowly climbing out of this less successful period, having developed his own Netflix series called The Pentaveret. The Pentaveret is a benevolent, fully sequestered secret society of five men. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.
You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Elizabeth Berkeley, Showgirls. Where are you from? Back east. From where back east? Different places. Say by the Bell introduced Elizabeth Berkeley to the world in the late 80s. One, two, three, bang. One, two, three, strikes. One, two, three, bang. By the time the show ended in the mid 90s, it was fair to say that the actor wanted to take a dramatic leap forward into films. Her opportunity came with the making of Paul Verhoeven's panned film, Showgirls. Instead of being a gritty look into the life of a dancer, the project comes off like a parody of itself. Did you enjoy that out there? Yeah, darling, I think I did. I hate you. Berkeley's performance was widely derided along with the rest of the production. While it wasn't entirely her fault, the film left a stain on her future as a leading woman. Some supporting parts allowed the performer to continue her career, but this was the last recognizable role for her. You think you could do my nails now? Huh. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.